Hello everyone, it's Dr. Desiree Alexander, aka Educator Alexander, and here's your five minute tip for this week. So I'm getting a bunch of questions about how do I clean up my Google Classroom. So I just wanna show you a couple of very quick tips of how I clean up my Google Classroom when I'm ready to do that. And of course you can rewind the video and pause it as needed, because I'm gonna go pretty quickly through it. So the first thing is to actually clean up the Google Classroom itself. So notice I have my math class, I have my English class. So I wanna clean these up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to archive them. But before I archive them, what I'm going to do is actually put the school year on it. That's gonna help you when you wanna reuse a post later. You can actually remember, oh, that's the school year when I did that awesome assignment, I wanna reuse it. So before I come to archive it, I'm actually going to come to these little three dots. Sometimes they're really noticeable. Sometimes, see how this one is kind of, you hardly even notice they're there, but they are there. So I'm going to click and I'm going to edit first. So when I edit, I'm going to come here and put 2019, 2020, just for an example, hit save. Then I'm going to come to this one and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I will say I'm a big, strong, get on your soapbox about do not delete Google Classrooms, only archive them. The only asterisk to that is if you have the exact same class multiple times. So for example, if I had English one, first period, English one, second period, English one, third period, I only want to save one of those because they all have the exact same assignments. So when it comes to editing them, I'm not going to edit all of them. I'm just going to edit the one that I plan to keep. Okay. So go ahead and um, do the edit. And then now we want to archive. When we archive, that disconnects the students from this Google Classroom. So I don't have to worry about going in to the Google Classroom and deleting all the students. You can do that if you would like to, but you don't have to worry about doing that because once you archive it, it immediately takes access away from the students from this Google Classroom. So now I'm going to go ahead and archive it. I'm going to click and click archive. It's really that simple. So I'm saying, hey, are you sure? Yes, I am sure. So I'm going to do that to all of them, even the ones I want to delete, I'm going to archive. So you have to archive them first. And once you do that, under the hamburger, the three little lines, if you come here and click it, the first time you archive a class, this button is going to come up. If you haven't archived a class yet, you're not going to see this. So I'm going to click archive classes, and this is where all of my classes live. You don't have to worry about storage or anything like that because if you're using a school account, of course, you don't have any, um, you have unlimited storage. Can you put these in folders and all that kind of stuff? Nope, not yet. So what I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to delete the ones I don't need anymore. So again, if I have multiple math you know, classes, I'm going to come here and now I can delete them. So it does make you archive before you delete. But the reason why you don't want to delete classes that have content in it, it's because you can reuse it. You know, those things are going to come up again. So you can reuse it and reuse things that you post it in later years. So that is how I'm going to go back classes. So that's how you clear up your dashboard, you get all of that gone, and you take the access away from your students. But remember, every time you create a Google Classroom, it also creates a Google Drive folder and it creates a Google Calendar. So you may wanna go clear up those as well. If you're not worried about those, don't worry about it. If you are, you can come here to your Google Calendar. So, you know, get to Google Calendar the way you get to Google Calendar and all of your Google Classroom classes, calendars will be down this list. So you have two options here. You can either hide it from your list, like I don't wanna see it anymore, but I still want access to it for some reason, or you can just delete it. So I have my, you know, calendar here, I can click on the hot dogs, the three little dots, the skinny snowman. I can come here and click this and I can say hide from list and that's just gonna hide it from the list. Or I can go to settings and sharing and under settings and sharing, you can scroll down, 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 down and delete 
the entire the entire calendar. So if you know, like I do not need to see this anymore, you can come here and delete it, like I'm doing right now. Bloop bloop, that is gone. So if you've ever wondered if I do come here and hide it from the list, where does it go? Well, it goes to settings and sharing. So if I come here, I'm just going to click open settings. And if you look settings for my calendars, look at all of the calendars that I hit, but I didn't delete. So this is where they come when you hide them. Last but not least is Google Drive. Don't we love Google Drive? So when you come here to your classroom folder, if you don't care about organizing it, then don't worry about it. If you do, you can organize it just like you organize your regular Google Drive. And that's what I suggest to people um, that are kind of type A like me and on all these folders from 50,000 years is going to upset me. So because I train, like I'll come and just say, you know, highlight a whole bunch of them and delete them every now and then because I don't need those. But if I wanted to keep the work, and of course, if you're dealing with SPED students, you have to keep it for a certain amount of time and things like that. So what I usually tell my people is just to make a folder and then make subfolders and just move stuff and ignore it. So for example, I may come here and click new, file upload. Oh, that's not what I wanted to click. Sorry about that. New folder. And I usually call my folder completed. Like I'm, I've completed those years, I'm done. But really anything you want to call it is fine. So as long as it makes sense to say like, I'm done with this. You can also use the number system if you want to make it the very first folder. So you never have to work like it's just it's at the top of the list. You know, that's not one that you're playing with. And sometimes I'll actually use a Z to make it at the bottom of my list. And I know that's one that I'm not playing with really up to you. So if I leave it at the bottom of the list, I just want to show you how that looks. So notice it's all the way at the bottom. So I won't even recognize it. I won't even play with it. If I wanted to rename it, I'm going to put it at the top now. And there you go. Sometimes I've named it like previous years or whatever you want to do. So then what I can do is I can come into my completed folder. And if you want to get really organized, I can make a folder and I can call this 2019 through 2020. And I can move all of the Google Classrooms for 2019 through 2020 in that folder. An easy way to do that is I can highlight all the ones for this school year, for example. And instead of like moving it to complete it and then moving it to the folder, which of course you can do, I'm going to use my little drop down right here. So I'm going to click the little arrow and highlight my classes. Notice classroom is right there. So I'm going to hover over classroom so I can bring up my subfolders. What? Hover over completed. What? And now I can just go ahead and drop them into 2019, 2020. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop. So now it's saying, hey, blah, blah. Yep, that's fine. I don't, I haven't shared that. They, they don't have access to anyway. I've already deleted these. So now, in my completed folder in here, I have all of those. And oh my goodness, now I can come here and get to this faster. I can keep this organized and I'm so excited. Moving the folders around really don't do, it doesn't do anything to the classroom itself. Um, and people will ask, you know, well, I, if I archive the class or I delete the classroom, does it delete the Google Drive folder and the work? No, it doesn't. So it, the Google Drive folder is still going to be sitting here looking at you. So if you don't care about this, then don't, like I said, just archive your classes and move on with your life. But if you use Google Calendar, you may want to get those, you know, um, extra calendars off there. And if you do go into the classroom folder on your drive, then you may want to tidy it up before the next school year. So just three very, very quick tips for cleaning up your Google Classroom and getting it all fresh and ready for the next school year. Good luck.